So, um, what made the the gill capacitive level sensors suitable for the uh, for the tanks on the on the one car? So, the capacitive aspect of these sensors is obviously very attractive for us. It means they are fully sealed sensors, um, so operating on a, a dried lake bed um, is effectively it's going to be very dusty. Yeah. Um, so having having all the sensors sealed mm -hmm. as sealed units mm -hmm. means they're going to be more reliable. Um, the the moving parts aspect just means that we can fit fit these. Mm -hmm. We don't have to worry about dust ingress mm -hmm. things like that uh, getting into the moving parts. Yeah. So it should be really good for that side of things. Mm -hmm. Where we have the HTP sensors mounted in this uh, part of the car. To get into the, to get access to those, we actually have to split the car at the bulkhead here and open it up mm -hmm. to get into that HTP tank. So you need something that's super reliable that you can kind of fix. So that is major, major maintenance mm -hmm. to get into there. And it will effectively mean packing everything up, coming mm -hmm. back to the UK, yeah. into the workshop. Because of the dusty environment out there, we wouldn't be able to do that kind of work. You say you just, just, just couldn't be accessed it on location? No. So we'd pack up, move back to the UK, um, and it would mean delaying the project another year. Mm. Um, so it's massively important yeah. that these are reliable sensors. Absolutely. Um, so, how important in general are sensors to the performance of the car? Well, one of the main points of a land speed record project has obviously got to be safety. Mm -hmm. So, we've got to know the data we've received from the sensors is accurate. Yeah. Um, and we we'll compare that after each and every run. And if there's any areas of concern, then we stop mm -hmm. where we are yeah. and we find out why. So every time we have a, an anomalous or a spurious reading, yeah. we will stop, that will be the running over for the day, yeah. we'll have to analyse the data and find out the reason why. Yeah. So we need to be fairly confident that the sensors are going to be reliable. Yeah, and the sensors kind of give you a, you know, a sort of vision into, into what's happening throughout the whole, uh, throughout the whole car. So why is uh, measuring the suspension deflection important to you? Well, as I mentioned, the surface of the desert is an alkaline plate. Mm -hmm. It'll have a, um, almost like a crust mm -hmm. on top of the mud. Yeah. Um, so the wheels have been designed to sit in that crust okay. to give us some la lateral traction. Mm -hmm. If we, if we uh, have too much downforce on the car, We'll be putting too much pressure on that crust. Okay. We may break through the crust and end up in the softer uh, mud underneath. Okay, which is going to cause extra drag and slow yeah. you down. So. so we need to monitor the amount that the suspension is moving and okay. how much the car's pushing down on those uh, wheels. Okay. So that, uh, those late 25s, mm -hmm. uh, that's the way. Playing a key part in uh, making sure you're at the right, uh, at the right level. Absolutely. So we're still working through the exact specification and, and design, but we're also looking at a, a brake standoff sensor uh, for you as well to, to make sure that the brake disc isn't engaged with the pad in any way. So how is that, uh, how is that going to affect the, the performance of the, the car if it was to? Okay, so we need to be 100% certain that there's no contact between the brake pad and the disc mm -hmm. as the car increases in speed over 200 miles an hour. Yeah. When it gets up to 800 miles an hour, if there's any contact there at all, mm -hmm. the brakes will overheat. Okay. And Andy will lose those brakes when it mm -hmm. comes to slowing back down okay. and stopping before the end yeah. of the 12 mile strip. Because he's got, uh, he's got a mile over run. So is it five, how many miles was it to break? So it's a 12 mile strip. Yeah. We're using the centre 11 miles. Mm -hmm. So it's got five miles to get up to speed. Yeah. Measure Yeah. Five miles to stop, to mm -hmm. break stop. 
So we've got about half a mile overrun at the end. Half a mile overrun. For end of mm. And we, we have to have the measure mile in the centre because it's got a ton round to do another run mm -hmm. in the opposite direction within an hour. Yeah. So we'll have the same amount of overrun in the end. Um, if those brakes over hit, yeah. then it's got to rely on the parachutes and the air brakes to stop. And they're going to be less effective below the 200 mile an hour. Exactly. Um, so uh, yeah, so pretty key to uh, to make sure that 200 miles an hour to zero is uh, essentially achieved.